What's up party people? We are back with another real estate education video. Let's jump right into it. We're not wasting any time. Okay, so today we're going to just jump right into it and address the elephant in the room. I know interest rates are high, they're pretty much at 7% and that's where we're gonna kind of be staying. But today I am going to educate you on the four most common mortgage types. So let's get into it. Okay, so I know some people hear mortgages and things like that, interest rates, and they have absolutely no clue what's going on. A lot of people go internet hunting and they don't know which type of mortgage they should go for, but I'm about to break it all down for you right now. So the four most common mortgage types are one, conventional, two is going to be FHA, three is going to be a VA, which is a veteran. Number four is going to be jumbo. Now, the first question I ask when I meet you at our first showing is, are you paying cash? Because until you tell me no, I'm just going to assume. And I know that may be a kicker, but I know sometimes finances can be a sticky situation. So I just provide the information, you do the rest, and I just show the houses. So I do my job, you do your job. All I could do is make recommendations. So once you laugh and say, no, I'm not paying cash, I was thinking about getting the loan, this is where I come in to help you figure the rest of the situation out. Okay, so the first type of mortgage we're going to be talking about today is going to be a conventional loan. Now a conventional loan is literally the most popular. Most people do go with conventional loans because it's kind of just for your average working class person. It doesn't have too many restrictions, but I'm going to give you the details on it right now. So number one, this loan can be used for your primary residence or your secondary residence um, as far as like an investment property. Pretty much as long as it's an upgrade, it can be used for a secondary home. So number two, this loan does require slightly higher credit score. Now, yes, I, we will go into details on other loan types later, but for conventional loan, pretty much to be in a good area, all lenders do require you have about a 620 credit score. And if you go back and watch my previous credit videos, um, I do go over that but I don't wanna to add too much confusion here. So 620 minimum for this loan type. Number three, this loan does require a higher down payment. Now some lenders do allow you to go as low as a 3.5, but that also depends on where your credit is at. So the higher your credit, the lower your down payment can be, but also the lower your credit, if your 620 is a little iffy or it's not as solid, they do kind of require that you come in with a little bit more money. So number four on this conventional loan is that it does require private mortgage insurance. Now private mortgage insurance is protection for the lender in case you stop making payments or in case you go into default. Private mortgage insurance is only required on this conventional loan until you hit 20% equity. Um, I will go over this in another video. I kind of believe this is going to be my next video just to kind of go into details here. Alrighty, so the second most popular mortgage type is going to be a FHA loan, which is government backed loan. FHA is usually with down payment assistance programs, you get an FHA loan. Um, if it's any type of government funding, you can get an FHA loan or some lenders uh, also do just have FHA loans because they're a little bit more flexible, but I'm gonna tell you why. So the first reason why FHA loans are kind of the second most popular is because they do allow for a lower credit score. Now they do go as low as a 580. That is kind of just generally speaking. Some lenders, depending on who you do go to specifically, may require your credit score to be a little bit higher, but a 580 is the minimum. Now, if you do have a 580 credit score, again, like I said, for the conventional loans, the lower your credit score, you may be required to put a little more money down. Of course, the higher the credit, the less money you have to put down for a down payment. Now, number two, 
FHA loans are minimal down payment 3.5% and they do not ask for more than that. You can always offer more if you do have that, but 3.5% is minimum. And like I said, for conventional loans, you can do it as well. But depending on what bank you go to, every bank and every lender has different requirements and obligations. Number three. So when you get an FHA loan, you cannot have a secondary home. It is owner occupied only. You cannot rent this home out. You cannot have your, you know, family stay there and keep it under your name. You have to live in the house for the entire duration of the loan. So lastly, the one thing that can be either a pro or a con to some people for an FHA loan, like I said, the home has to be owner occupied, but you cannot just get any type of house. The standards for the house is very strict, which I tell most people is great because it's like, obviously you don't want to just move into anything, but even like the minor things that maybe you think you can fix, FHA may or may not cover it. So there are stricter guidelines when home shopping. And typically they tell you like as a realtor, when we're shopping for homes, generally sellers will let you know whether the home can be FHA approved or not. The higher quality homes will be FHA approved. So definitely could be a, pro, a con for some, but it's definitely a pro. So our third most popular mortgage type is going to be a VA loan, which is for veterans only. Now, a lot of veterans do not take advantage of this program because it does come with a few restrictions and a few limitations. So some people just don't prefer it at all. But if you are a veteran, I would definitely say this is something that you need to look into and take full advantage of your benefits. Here's why. Number one, no down payment is required. Yes, you will have some closing costs, but ideally when you're first starting the transaction, you bring no money to the table, which can be a great benefit. Number two, this just like a FHA loan is also owner occupied. You cannot have a secondary home under this loan program. And again, did I say this was for veterans only? Each state has its own VA requirements under their state programs, but you must be a veteran either active or inactive, but you can't have any I want to, don't hold me to this, do some research, but I do believe you cannot be dishonorably discharged. You like, you have to have a good, pretty good, clean, solid record of active or inactive duty. Now, number four, which is a great pro for many veterans is that you don't have to have a credit score minimum. You don't really have to have like a full, you know, clean background. Um, it, the credit requirements are very low for to qualify for the state programs, but like for all loans, like I say, each lender or bank is going to have their own requirements. So that is just something that you have to be aware of. Um, I will say that your credit score doesn't have to be extremely high, but you also, your debt to income ratio can't be like, you can't have a piles and piles of debt and making little to no income. That's the only thing about that, which can be a pro or a con. Like I always say in every video, everybody's situation is different. Just like a FHA loan with VA loans, they are government backed. So again, this is just like a FHA loan. This is kind of a similar requirement. The property standards are super strict. I would say VA loans are even more stricter than FHA loans for property standards. The higher quality the home, I know it's gonna be more expensive, but the higher quality of the home, the VA loan will be covered. And again, as I said, the like just like for FHA loans, generally sellers will tell you if it can go, you know, FHA or VA, you know, 
approved um you know people just know the quality of their home like it's not going to pass for a loan at all and one thing i want you to understand about these government backed loans i'll just make a side point it is great i mean yes it is a pro and a con but it is also great because at least you know that you're not moving they're not allowing you to move into just anything um yeah for fha and va loans they both are not like you can't get a fixer upper which is good like you you don't want to necessarily a fixer upper because what if in five years you know you don't you end up not being able to repair everything and then you know you end up having to move out the house or just you know it's just one of those things where it puts a lot at risk and the bank wants you to understand that. So, I mean, I think it's great that they have, you know, strict property standards, which does end up putting you in a little higher price of a home, but there's also less risk on your safety, hazards, and all of that type of stuff. So that's definitely something I know some people turn their nose up, but it's a great thing at the end of the day fourth and final mortgage type that is popular in california is going to be a jumbo loan now i know everybody's like what's a jumbo loan you may or may not have heard of it before um i know for some lenders and some banks they kind of call it every it may be a different type of name for it but here is what it is and why it may be for you so for jumbo loans these are top tier homes and they only are in major cities so like la new york miami where properties are way more expensive than your average these are where jumbo loans do are covered okay so the number one reason why jumbo loans exist is because it covers expensive homes only number two why jumbo loans exist it is for high income owners only. I wanna say these are for homes maybe like 2 million and up. Um, and yeah, even in California, we already know that a $2 million home may not be the greatest, but that is not the point. Now, number three, on jumbo loans, higher down payments are required. Like generally you can't come in with less than 10%. Um, if you can put down more, of course, the bank will take more, but you're definitely looking at about 10 to 20% on a down payment for a jumbo loan. I mean, I know a jumbo loan is not going to be for everybody and it is not the most common, but like I said, we live here in LA. So this is the only reason why this jumbo loan is relevant. So if you come across this video, I would definitely say if you're a high income earner, that is something you need to look into. Alrighties guys, so that was the four most popular mortgage types that you're gonna come across when you're starting the home process. Now, I didn't go into too much detail. I didn't wanna oversaturate and like confuse everybody. But as I've said, when you're looking, if you go back to my finding a realtor for you videos, you wanna be able to do some homework on your own for mortgage types, just so you can be more in tune and you know, I know interest rates are crazy, but every mortgage type is going to offer you something different. Every lender and every bank is going to offer you something different. So I would say definitely just explore all of your options because you may be looking for one thing and may need another. Everybody's situation is different. You have to do what's best for you. What worked for one person may not work for the next. So I'm just here to provide the information, but do your own research at the end of the day before you start this journey just so you kind of have an idea. But as always, I love you guys. Um, catch up, comment, subscribe if you have a mortgage, any questions that you have. Like for first thing we're gonna do is like this video and then we're gonna comment. I want you guys to have an amazing day, have an amazing week. I will be in touch, bye.